On that note, it turns out you can travel through time just by being launched far enough. So if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of significant changes to history I have to make. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory. Well, Grace, we made it to the Wild West. Look, there's my ancestor, Lucky Lassoum. Well, looky here, partner. I reckon that there varmint polyester sparks is up to no good again. You'll never take me alive! <laughs> well, would you look at that? She's gone and robbed the big city bank. Saddle up there, Gracious. We gotta catch that outlaw lickety split. <coughs> you know, Grace, this actually reminds me of an old SpongeBob episode I once saw. How could I ever forget Hest of the West? Seriously, how could I ever forget it? It was literally all over the place. This was one Spongebob special they did not want you to miss. And would you believe it? In a rare turn of events for the time, the episode actually had the same name it was advertised with. See, that wasn't so hard. But it wouldn't be long till we get Hoobob Wetpants, aka whatever happened to Spongebob, so enjoy it while it lasts. But like I said, this was inescapable. I've mentioned before that most of my surviving Spongebob toys are from their collab with Burger King. They've seen better days, though. Howdy, partner. I reckon you want to know more about the new SpongeBob SquarePants Pest of the West toys. Available only at Burger King. You can round up one toy with every kid's meal. I love that little sponge. I even used to have a whole Nickelodeon magazine dedicated to the special. I'd read through the comics and play its games all the time. Sadly, it's been lost over the years, but I'll never forget it. But enough of that. This was a very unique special for me because not only was it one that had the same name it was advertised with, but in a very rare turn of events, I actually saw it when it first aired. Huh, <laughs> I don't even have to add to my accursed list this time. I remember being really obsessed with the episode and really excited to watch it. I even rented the DVD and watched it constantly. There was even one instance where I sat in front of the TV and took notes on the episode, pausing constantly to do so. Yeah, I was a weird child. Maybe I thought I'd be a YouTube reviewer one day. But yeah, this episode was a whole event. It even had a marathon leading up to it where people voted online for which episodes would air. It was styled like a showdown where one episode beat out another one. And seriously, they put Reef Blower against Fear of a Krabby Patty? What did they expect to happen? But as part of this marketing, the episode received a Flash game developed by Sarbakken on Nick.com. Later, it would also receive The Legend of Deadeye Gulch as part of the Spongebob Quest Pants series, but that's not what we're focusing on today. This one played out as a fast-paced selection of minigames similar to Badger Hammer's Where's Gary, which was seemingly inspired by WarioWare. So listen to this old country music to set the mood. let's check out these minigames and see if I'm any good at them. But I mean, you can't exactly blame me for a bad performance. It's hard getting internet reception out here in the Wild West. So when you start the game, you'll be hit with the rounds in a random order. We're playing this thing called The Loop, and we have to complete a lucky number 7 amount of micro games. Once you beat one, you unlock it in the minigames gallery. But for now, we just have to play The Loop. For this one, we're being timed as we have to make sponge bucks stay on the back of this wild seahorse. You do this by moving the mouse in the opposite direction the horse is tilting in, allowing you to hang on. It's easy enough, but the timer feels extremely slow, and it can seem like even if you're doing a good job, you can lose it at the very last second. Which, as you can see, was exactly what happened to me. It's about as easy as it is for me to ride a horse in real life. Ow! Then this round, the instructions simply tell you to shoot. Okay then, let's give it a trial we already lost. Okay then. I struggle with this even when I know what I'm doing. You have to keep shooting to keep the hat afloat, but you don't have much time to react. This is a fast game and you gotta keep up. If you can't handle the speed, get off the horse. But it's a lot of fun once you're able to get it going. I especially like how you can shatter the glass bottles in the background. I really like that they included that detail. One of the harder stages, but a good one. Though I do feel like I shouldn't have as much trouble with this as I do. But I'm not very intelligent, so maybe it's on me. But here's my least favorite. The slot machine. You have to click to stop the machine three times to make three matching images line up. You can try to coordinate it as best as you can, but it mostly comes down to luck. 
I should mention that you only start with 5 lives and the game ends when you run out, so it isn't too fun having one that can easily sap one. I prefer Marlin's slot machine from Employee of the Month. That one had lower stakes. Just your ability to get out of rock bottom, that's all. But hey, at least the difficulty of this micro game might discourage kids from gambling in real life. If you're in a saloon and some fella comes over and asks you to play some poker, you'd best be hightailing it out of there. Now in this one, you're tied to the tracks and have to shake the mouse to get out of your ropes. It's extremely easy, but I have to say, being tied to the tracks with a non-coming vehicle reminds me of a very certain... other game. No please, not Operation Rail. I can't do that again. I'll never forget that fateful day. But anyway, moving on. In another one where you shake the mouse, you have to make a shake. You do so by... shaking the shake. Then you have to release the mouse at just the right time to complete a shake. It's a little hard to figure out, because if you shake for too long, you cover yourself in it. You have to do a quick shake and then release the mouse to complete it. It's actually kind of fun once you figure out what you're doing. You can just keep flying through them then. I just feel like there should be a better indication of how long you need to shake it for. But hey, it could be worse. We could be doing math to make the milkshakes. But you know, this episode insinuated that milk was some form of alcohol in the Spongebob universe. I guess that explains the ice cream in the movie. So milkshakes would be some kind of cocktail. Shaken, not stirred. But here's an easy one to balance it out. You ride a horse and lasso another bucking bronco with a little click. It only takes a couple tries, really. But I might just be good at it. I guess lassoing runs in my family, hence my ancestor's name. You're darn tootin' right about that, little lady. By the way, I'm not sure why Spongebuck's holes are more orange in this stage than in any of the other ones. Maybe his insides are getting tanned from being exposed to the sun out there. You know how it is. But now for this last one, you have to pull your seahorse into a stable by rapidly clicking. You know why that stable doesn't have windows? Cause whoever heard of stable windows? The instructions also flashed on the screen too quickly for me, so I didn't know what to do at first, but I figured it out quickly enough to win. Also, listen to Spongebuck in this. I know Sarbakin often used clips that vaguely sounded like Spongebob characters rather than actual voice clips, but this was a new one at the time. But once you've completed all seven minigames, you know what you do next? Play them again, but faster this time. Then you just keep playing them over and over until you run out of lives. But for every stage you clear, you get a medal and the ability to play it individually. Now if you really want to test your skills and become the most rootin' tootin' cowhand in the Wild West, you can keep playing these until you get the hang of them. I do recommend breaks every so often, since your arm might get a little tired from how much you move the mouse. It might be a stretch, but I almost wonder if the amount of games that require you to shake the mouse are trying to emulate swinging a lasso. If that's intentional, I really respect it. But I do wish it was longer and that some of the games had more value to go back to them. I don't think too many people would replay the slot machine on their own accord. Others are really simple and don't have the most complicated mechanics. I feel like this could have used more than seven minigames, especially with how big of a special this was. It's fine, but I don't think I'd call it one of Sarbakan's most record-shattering titles. But if you want to personally challenge yourself, you can give these a spin and become the most fearsome buckaroo in the West. And how. That wraps things up for this here adventure, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm the most fearsome cowpuncher around these parts just yet. As a matter of fact, Grace, I got so distracted by Spongebob that I totally forgot why we even came all the way to the Wild West to begin with. Ah well, at least I got to relive a good childhood memory. Come on, Poodle, let's get back to the much less entertaining present day, because as much as we love the past, we can only move forward. So if you'll all be so kind as to- Ah! Gosh, I hate the sound of trains. Especially since I just mentioned Operation Rail. I don't need to be reminded of my number one weakness. Let's just find a catapult and fling ourselves back to the present. <laughs> Operation Rail, huh? Very interesting. You know, even if it isn't perfect, games like these are always fun to look back on. 
You can remember how much fun you had and relive those very moments. The more you play this, the more you really get the hang of it. If you just keep going, you can really get a feel for each of the mini-games, and if you beat them all, it can be worth a ton of personal satisfaction. Sometimes that's the best prize of all. And as a representation of the episode, I think this did a decent job. It doesn't explore any aspects of the episode, but it does incorporate Wild West themes and makes the most of the setting. That's what the episode was all about, embracing the cowboy aesthetic through Spongebob. Could there be a better way to do it? It's one of the most popular themes for cartoons to parody, so I'm glad they didn't take the opportunity for granted. But this is a good mark of the past, and one I'm sure many people look back on with a smile. As always, I'm glad to look back and see what gems from the past we can uncover. These Flash games once meant a lot to me, so I'm happy to share them with a new audience today. So once again, thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory. Go on, Sonny. Shoot the hat. Come on, you can do it. I'm trying, but it's falling too fast. Ah, oh, you missed it. But look, now you have to shake the shakes. But I haven't renewed my milkshake license. Ah, my tentacle's gonna fall off. How long am I supposed to shake this for? Ah, oh, you failed again. That would be an F if you were in my class, Sonny. What's with all the commotion in here? My beautiful brain is trying to think of our next evil plan. We were just playing the game Lucy's doing a review on. It's both fun and strangely familiar. I don't care how fun or familiar it is! You know I don't like to be disturbed when I'm working. It breaks my concentration. Why don't you give it a try, dearie? Then you'll see how much fun it is. Hmm. I have better things to do with my time than play silly flash games. But just to show you how much better I am than the rest of you... I'll give it a try. Stand aside. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, dearie. Come on. You can do it, you can do it. Ah, oh, you failed the easiest one. Oh, yeah? Well, who cares? Anyway, I don't need a silly game to tell me I'm a good cattle rancher. My ancestor was the great polyester Sparks, in case you didn't know. The famous bandit? Yeah, sure she was. Even have this letter she wrote for me personally just before she died in prison you personally what does it say um well you see i don't know i never got around to reading it i'm not sure why i haven't actually it's just collecting dust <laughs> okay let me dig it out <clears throat> To my great-great-great-great-great-great-granddaughter. Lucky Lassum's descendant is weak to something called Operation Rail. Yeehaw. Lucky Lassum? Isn't that Lucy Lilliam's great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandpa? How do you know that? Know your enemy, Sonny. Always know your enemy. Wait. This is perfect. If this... Operation Rail really is Lucy Lasagna's weakness. We may have found the key to defeating our mortal enemy. Looks like Lucy Liability better be ready for what happened next. <laughs> Maybe if we stopped you in the past, you wouldn't be so much trouble in the future. Happy trails. <laughs> ah! <laughs> we couldn't stop Laggy Lilium from making that lights, camera, pants video. How dare our nemesis enjoy a childhood game? We have to stop them right away. You're right. They could review Jumpstart 5th Grade in their next video. Hmm. If only the solution to our problems could come crashing down on us. <coughs> hey, what's this? Loser Lilium's weakness? Well, 
I like the sound of that. <laughs> Leaving on a sudden train only yesterday, you lied, promise it. Oh, hey, Grace. Wait, what do you mean that's not actually a country song? Darn, I thought it was fitting enough for a Western-themed video.